All right, guys, so the video for today is a little different. It's more of a conversation. Once again, it's going to be part of the Becoming Pro playlist here in this channel. And we're going to be talking about the differences between the starving artist and the thriving artist. And I know that this is a, a long conversation. We could go here for hours, but for this video, I just want to actually talk about four points. And these four points are going to be examples on how you actually um, can perceive things as an artist. The starving artist has a certain view of, you know, how the do's and don'ts of their practice and the thriving artist maybe allows himself or herself to be able to experiment and play with a little bit more things and also is a very organized person or should be so that he actually is able to create and also do some other things, which we'll talk about in this video. So let's just start. I think that the very first item here in this list on how the starving artist actually believes is that focusing on making money from their art prevents them from making good art. And this is something really interesting. It's quite common actually to find a lot of artists who say, I will not do any commercial work. I will only do the art that I believe. And if you have financial ways to support yourself, if you have ways to pay, to pay your bills, to pay for your needs, you know, health, food and all, basic needs. I think that's great. I think you are a very, very lucky person to be able to have these things and be able to only and exclusively work for your art. However, I do find that the thriving artist is able to see that, you know, the day has 24 hours, taking off the hours to eat, sleep, and do your basic needs to take care of yourself. You can still divide your day to work for commercial work, work for clients, and those are going to then fund your uh, the art that you really want to create. So once again, really is a matter of perspective, is a matter of how you see things. It's not necessarily saying that, oh, because I'm doing commercial work uh, during the day, that's the, kind of, uh, that's the kind of artist that I am. And it's really not. It's what you put online, it's what you put to others that really speaks for your brand. So if you do that commercial work, and you just keep it in the back pocket, keep it in a drawer. You don't have to really share that unless you're really, you know, unless you are quite proud of what you did for a specific client or project. But otherwise, the thriving artist is looking for opportunities to do, do this kind of work so that he can fund the work that he really loves and believes in. And once again, it's a bit of a snowball effect because the starving artist could get there faster but it's just going to take longer and longer because he's not doing any commercial work. He's not finding any shortcuts. And for him, it's basically going to be working in that, in that art that he loves and believes until he finally gets the recognition and the funds from you know that those fans to be able to buy his or her art to then finally fund his living. Whereas the thriving artist is able to already make funds from commercial work that he does maybe during the day or maybe a couple of days a week and then fund the work that he really or she really loves. All right, so point number two is also quite common and as well a little bit controversial, but it's that idea where the starving artist believes that good art doesn't need to be, doesn't need to, to be sold anywhere. It just, it gets picked up naturally. People will just see it and fall in love with it and just kind of share it to the four corners of the world and you don't really have to do anything. And it feels a little bit of an excuse really for people who really don't want to reach out or they're just a little bit shy to kind of, you know, share their work. It really goes back to that you need to spend some time sharing your work and this is nothing to be ashamed of. So the thriving artist really understands that. He understands, he or she understands that this is nothing to be ashamed of, to be, to share your work for the right demographics, to find your crowd, to find the ones that really appreciate your art and be able to share those. And that creates opportunities down the road that creates, uh, you know, like new fans and people who can really support you, whether it's through a Patreon or you're on Instagram or like supporting your art. There are so many sites and I think I've made a couple of videos. I think there was one video in particular, which is 20 ways to actually try to make a living with Procreate. And uh, I've talked about many really cool um, opportunities such as that website Coffee, which you can fund a specific project or even your ongoing practice. And you can create art for the people that are supporting you 
or you can create spe special kind of fan art and also be able to share that with your fans. And it's quite similar to Patreon. Um, and there are so many other ways. So the thriving artist sees opportunities. He's not really afraid to share his or her work. Point number three, the starving artist believes that the only way to truly be a great or a big artist is to be found by or to enter a gallery. And this may actually come from the old masters, the old painters, how they were commissioned by wealthy families. And you know, you had um, these like big painters who did like really uh, big pieces of art that were then displayed in parties and events and all those things. And they actually did it for two reasons. One is that yes, they were getting funded to do so and be able to support their own practice, which is actually quite similar to the first point on the thriving artist. But the second point is that this was one of the ways in the past to get work and get a little bit of recognition. And I think that the, the world of today, there are so many tools and it, I know it sounds very cliche and um, that I keep mentioning all these things, but you really can find all of these avenues now. You really can find all of these websites if you slowly and surely like find the right crowd to uh, to talk to for your art. So let's just give a few examples here. So if you're doing a lot of realistic concept concept art kind of level art, you can always try to make an account on ArtStation and post your art there. If you make some uh, very graphical stylized art, such as the ones that I actually create here in this channel, Instagram is a great place. Dribble is a really, really great place because it kind of speaks more to graphic graphic designers and also Behance is a good location. So there are really lots of ways to actually um, share your art once again and create opportunities. And what's mostly important is that the way that the thriving artist sees this is that he or she actually experiments with as many possible avenues before even finding the ones that are working better. And for that, I'll actually give one of my examples. So as you guys know, I do have this YouTube channel and I love creating content here. That doesn't mean that I don't make course courses on Skillshare. That doesn't mean that I may uh, that I don't make, you know, tools and special at like things on Gumroad, which is something that I'm actually quite happy to do. So I've been connecting more and more, a little bit more with the community on Gumroad. And I do find that they're really, um, they're really looking for the best tool to evolve their art and create the best piece of artwork or their next best illustration. And that's something that is quite special. It's something that is really one of the biggest focus on, um, on this channel. And I think that um, being able to speak to this crowd is something very, very important. So if I've only done YouTube, I would actually be missing the chance to actually connect with this community. If I didn't do uh, Skillshare as well, I would be missing the point to actually create some more specific targeted courses and be able to talk to these students, how they go through their lessons. And it's it's a little bit different because there on Skillshare, I can plan, I can plan a little, a little bit ahead, create out of the lessons and create the best course that I can make or the best class. And it's also similar to Udemy. So there are, are there are all these places and you may find yourself a great teacher and mentor and maybe Skillshare and, and Udemy are going to be great for you. But maybe um, you might as well, you maybe you see yourself like being kind of uh, like a live stream artist. Maybe you're doing Twitch, Mixer, you're doing other websites where your uh, your practice is a little different. It's more about creating that piece with your viewers, with your audience, and not really about planning ahead a course of 12 lectures. So without the thriving artist tries all of these avenues and once again finds the one that works best for them. And now point number four, which is also quite controversial because it really goes down to one of the essences of the starving artist is that he or she really believes that they need to stay small and have a little bit of that suffering, that struggling for them to be considered a true artist. This again may stem from stories from the great masters. Once again, you know, you hear like all these stories of like great writers, great painters, how they suffered a lot through creating art. But I personally believe that art doesn't need to be created only from a place of suffering. Uh, it, it is a very powerful uh, thing to channel that uh, emotion in a piece of art. 
but you can also you can also channel other emotions as you're creating and it doesn't mean that every artist should suffer or needs to suffer that much to be a famous artist or to create whatever he or she needs to create so once again the thriving artist believes that to make good work to make great work it comes from a place of passion it comes from a place of putting a lot of hard work so if you have passion and if you have hard work even if you don't have a lot of talent because some people yes they are gifted and they already start maybe with a lot of talent and even though as we say in the world of illustration it's a lot about repetition it's a lot about studying and repeating forms and shapes until they you actually have a library of shapes in your mind and that's how a lot of great artists they they're just able to repeat that shape through many angles and that's how they draw characters that's how they draw locations and references are such a big thing but uh, in a nutshell I believe that having passion and hard work that's what make great art for the thriving artist he doesn't need to be suffering that much he doesn't need to not be trying to sell or share their work he's finding active ways to sell their art so that he can he or she can fund their art they are sharing their art they're not really uh, being shy about it and they don't believe that like suffering is the only way the only emotion that needs to come out to channel to make great art so i believe that's it for this video guys but now for the question for the comment section down below is for this year of 2020 and i know this is a year full of challenges is there one thing that you have been trying to do a little bit differently when it comes to your art? Let me know in the comment section down below if you have been trying something different this year for your art, whether you're trying a new website, whether you're trying like a new service or even a new technique. Is there anything that you have been trying a little bit differently when it comes to your art? Let me know in the comments, comment section down below if you have been trying anything new for your art this year. So that's it for this video guys hope you guys enjoyed it. if you did a like would be super appreciated as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon for more content more reviews tips and tricks and speed paint videos and that is all for you to become a better digital illustrator now on the right side of the screen there's more content for you to expand your skills and knowledge in procreate and other illustration apps thank you so much for watching and i'll see you on the next one ciao